Oh my God. I, this is, doesn't even compare, but I wanted to sit outside today because I am in Highlands, North Carolina, uh, in the mountains of North Carolina. And it is probably one of the most gorgeous places on earth. Like driving in here yesterday with my son, I came out with my son who's up for a job interview here in the area. And we were just like constantly, Oh my God. Wow. <gasps> oh, you know, like it, it was so hard. I, I can't wait to do the drive again when somebody else is driving because I wanted him to get that experience driving into the area, you know, to be able to see it all and not be the one driving that first time. So now he's got to drive me around a little bit. So I guess. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's such a good mom. I know we were talking before we went live about how many amazing places there are in the world. And it's just unbelievable. We get stuck in our own little territory, but there's so much fabulousness out there to see. So hopefully he'll get the job. Yes. Wish him all luck. Yep. All right. Good luck to your son. All right. So let's talk today about being prepared if, well, I guess when your website crashes, because it happens to everyone usually at some point, correct? It's technology. Technology fails. And I mean, it's not like a matter of I can make, make sure that that never happens. It's a matter of being prepared when it happens so that you don't have the stress, the strain, the overwhelm, the nightmare that I've seen so many people go through, myself included, you know, years ago before I really dove into web design as a business. And I wanted to start off really quick with um, just kind of a quick little story. And there's an interior designer, an author, and a coach, and each one of their websites crashed. So the interior designer, she was on kind of a mediocre hosting company that promotes really good stuff, charges high dollar, but her website started crashing on a Saturday evening every hour. And this was the day after she left a national conference. Oh. So you can imagine she's given out tons of business cards, a presenter at the <laughs> conference, you know, and her website is crashing, 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 crashing. But she had a website plan in place. She has a web designer, which is me, who is taking care of things. So on Saturday night, while she's having cocktails with her husband and enjoying her evening, I am adding a dinner party with my husband on my phone addressing <laughs> her website issues and getting her moved off of this mediocre co company, which was already our plan. We were just kind of waiting till the payment you know, was expired, like her plan was done, wanting to get the most of her money but I'm getting her moved. And by Monday, everything is perfectly restored and everything is wow. working. So she enjoyed her weekend and I took care of everything for her because we have this maintenance plan in place. And now we have an even better maintenance plan in place because we got her on good hosting. Awesome. So, right. So then the author, this just happened Saturday, Saturday morning while she's sipping coffee, her, the server that her website was on was under attack someone out there in the unsavory world of the interwebs was trying to find holes to get in and use the, the websites for, you know, naughty purposes, for lack of a better word there. So she's sipping coffee. I am alerted immediately about the attack. I'm able to get in with the, web, the hosting company and make sure additional protections are put into place for her along with everybody else. Like they were on top of it even before I was because it's a great hosting company. And she got to sip her coffee and we made sure her website was protected. Right. Because that's what she's paying you for. Yeah. So uh, uh, that is, that is the importance of paying somebody to do what they do best because I wouldn't even know what phone call to make. And here's the sad part of the story. The coach, we built her website and she wanted to take care of it herself, which I'm totally fine with teaching people how to do that. Like I'm all about empowering people with their website. If you want to learn how to take care of it, that's great. I will teach you how to do it. I'll create videos and I will give you everything. But she didn't follow my recommendations. And she just messaged me on Monday on our drive up here to say, hey, my website is down. Come to find out her website had crashed six months ago. <gasps> And she didn't notice for six she months? Didn't notice for six oh months. Aww. So she's not on a website maintenance plan. So I don't have the things in place that I do for the clients who do. She didn't follow the recommendations and create her maintenance plan. She has no backup, no nothing. And she's going to have to get a whole brand new website. I want to cry for her. It wasn't me. That's for sure. No, 
No, it wasn't. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, it was not me. I pay people to do the things I know I'm never going to do myself. And that's just it. You need to have a way, website maintenance plan, whether you pay somebody or you learn to do it. I don't, again, like I don't teach people how to do it, but you've got to have something in place. And I will be honest with you. Most people, they don't do it because it's overwhelming, because it's scary, because they don't know what to do. But if you are that person that wants to learn, I'm going to tell you how I do it and what you need to do to have your own maintenance plan in place. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, get on my calendar and let's talk about a maintenance plan. Because Definitely. You need, you need somebody who's going to take care of you. And that's just it. Yes. yes. And let me add to that. If you're not, well, if you're in the beginning stages of your business, this is often when you're going to try to do things yourself. And that's totally understandable. But there's a certain point in your business that you should be charging enough money for what you do for a living in order to pay people to do what they do best. You know, you hear all of us coaches say, stay within your superpower. You can't stay in your superpower if you're not charging enough money for your superpower to pay people like Teresa to maintain your website, right? So, all right, let's go over this. I just had to add that in because it's really yeah. key for people to understand why do they need to increase their rates sometimes in order to protect themselves against things like this and needing to hire someone who's an expert in this area? Right. Because like with the case of the coach, if her website goes down, she's either investing massive amounts of money into a new site yeah. or she's putting her business on hold while she tries to build a site. Either way, the investment is huge, whether it's time or money, it's huge. And so that's, I mean, that's kind of why I wanted to share with this and talk about this today because you've got to protect yourself and you've got to protect that investment of your website, whether it's a time and money investment, it doesn't matter. You have to protect it. All right. And someone's writing here, Teresa takes care of my website monthly, me too. And she is well <laughs> worth it. Very reasonable for peace of mind. Okay. Just says Facebook user uh, because they haven't given Be Live permission to see their name, but thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Yes. That's awesome. So, uh, okay, so the first one is security updates. And in this one, I'm really talking specifically to WordPress users because my Squarespace people, they take care of the maintenance behind the scenes. So you never have it happen. So, but there is still things with Squarespace you want to worry about. But with WordPress, you've got to go in. And I honestly tell people to do this weekly. Go in and install those security updates. Those security updates make sure your website's functioning better. It makes sure that it's has vulnerabilities patched. So like in the case where this lady who these people were attacking the server, if I had not been taking care of her website, it probably would have taken over her website. If she wasn't on a good hosting company, I guarantee her website would have been taken over and then it would have been, you know, some Viagra ads or porn or something inappropriate that she doesn't want people to see. She's a Christian author. She doesn't want people to see any of that kind of stuff. So you got to do those security updates and they really are not that bad. In fact, in the blog post I shared this week, I walk you through it in a video and go through and do those updates every week. Trust me, you're better off doing them than ignoring them and procrastinating them because that's when the crashes and the vulnerabilities happen. Yeah, don't think it's not gonna happen to me. Do the security updates. The security, and I have so many stories of people losing their website who did it. Oh my God, okay, security updates. That's okay. the number one. Number two is you wanna monitor your website for outages. And this isn't just WordPress, this is any site because websites go down. I have monitoring in place. Like I monitor all of my clients' websites 24 seven. So that's how I know when those things happen. That's how I know when something is being attacked or something's not right is I get a text message alert that tells me the website is not taking, you know, is there's something wrong and you need to go look at it. It so doesn't give you why we, but that's why that coach didn't know their website was down for six months because they hadn't hired you for maintenance so that you didn't get that text alert. Got it. Okay. Well, I got no text alert because they weren't on the maintenance plan, you know, right. but like with the interior designer and the author, I knew immediately and literally like I'm sitting at a table having dinner, dinner at a, a holiday party with my husband on my phone, you know, addressing things because I knew about it that quickly. So there's, I mean, there's the benefit, but you can do monitoring yourself. In fact, I have a link to a free site that allows you to monitor your website. If you want to be notified yourself, it's uptimerobot.com. 
but you again go to the, the blog post and you can get the link and you go in it's easy to use you add your website and then you can have it send you text and email alerts if your website is to go down Oh my God, I don't want to do that. But I think it's a great idea. But I do that for you, Nancy. So you do that. I know. I'm so happy right now. Yeah. Um, that's the last thing I, I'm, I'm trying to do better at putting my phone away. The last thing I want to do is know when. So thankfully, I have you. Okay. Exactly. Number okay. Two, so number monitoring out for outages is number two. And then number three is that recovery plan. What are you going to do? What actions are you going to take when it goes down? Like that, that's the big thing is you got to know what to do because at some point it's going to crash and you're going to have to restore a backup or you're going to have to do something to get things up and going. And so knowing what to do. So the first thing is making sure you always have a backup in place of your I website. was just going to say a lot of people aren't even backing up their websites. They're not even backing up their websites. And a lot of hosting companies say that they do. But in the case with my interior designer who had the really mediocre crappy hosting company that we were getting ready to move off of, all... I went back, I think, two weeks, and every backup was corrupted. <gasps> That's why I called them mediocre, because their backup files were completely corrupted, and I could not do any kind of restoration on it. I mean, thankfully, I was able to, with my own practices and my own stuff in place, her website, we didn't lose her website. I tossed up a temporary homepage to get until I was able to get things going. And then her full website was restored. So it wasn't a big deal. But that's what if you didn't have me, you know, so you want to make sure that you've got a good solid backup in place. And that's number two, you know how to install that backup. You know what to do with the backup once it happens. I know. It's a lot. So, right. So in my blog post, you guys will have to check it out. With Squarespace and WordPress, I tell you how you can make your own backups and not rely on just your hosting company. Or if you go with the hosting company I recommend, which is SiteGround, they are hands down one of the best. And the one you use, Flywheel, is very good as well. Their backups are really good, really solid, and their support is top notch. Um, but you can make your own backups as well so that you have that available and you know what to do with it. So, okay. And this is why I like working with you because you, like you said in the beginning or in the middle, you don't mind if people are able to do it themselves. You're teaching them. This is how you do it yourself. If you want to do it yourself, here's your step by step. Yeah. But no at least learn enough to know what you're doing so you don't get stuck and then you end up getting the emergency phone call yep. and you're hired in the last minute during a disaster instead of in the beginning when you can. Right. You know, and I'm just going to be honest, in the last minute in the middle of a disaster, for me to rearrange my calendar to work overtime basically and to help address it in the time that it matters, you're going to pay a lot more. Right. Because, I mean, it's it's emergency support. It's, you know, I'm yeah. having to basically work a lot of extra hours outside of my norm to accommodate my clients and you. And so I'm going to have to charge additional fees for that because, and that's just. Because you're going to have to make up not having dinner with your husband for this. <laughs> I'm going to have to take him to make up for that. So. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, so that's just the thing. But with this, like in my maintenance plan, they didn't pay anything extra to me because they're on the maintenance plan and it was just one of those fluke things. So my husband doesn't mind because it is rare that those Saturday nights happen. Right. It is very rare. Right. All right. It's awesome. And All right. right. Go ahead. Yeah. One more thing. Well, as I said, the last thing too about the backup, that backup recovery plan is even though you've got a backup downloaded and all of that, just in case the backup's corrupted, have an actual soft copy backup of your content, the written words on each page, the images that you use for your website. So if you do have the worst case scenario where you've got to rebuild your website, you have everything you need to rebuild. You have that for every site that you build? You have like everything on a separate? That's actually, I have most things, but we're putting a new plan into place moving into the second quarter of the year where we're going to start doing more regular content backups for everyone. I'm just trying to find the most effective way and efficient way to do that for everybody. 
Right. But you have where the backups are being done on a regular basis. and good Oh, I have, yeah, daily backups along with anytime we do a major update on the website, we download our own personal backup. Um, and plus, I have a few clients that want to keep a backup themselves. So it's a, I mean, it's so definitely redundancy, but um, we'll even do a third place as well and set that up for them to save a backup straight to their Google Drive if they need to do so. Right. Better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry, like always. I mean, I have so much in place that, again, even with the one client whose website had corrupted backups, I had enough content. I could quickly design a homepage for her that got everybody exactly where they needed to be so that while I was working on restoring the full site, nobody was going to a dead page because right. I had the content available. Okay. All right. Awesome tips as usual. And I'm excited because we're in the process of redoing my website once again. <laughs> and Teresa's handling that for me. Um, so stay tuned for that in the next couple of weeks or so. Yeah. Um, that's going to be great. So thank you, Teresa. I love the fact that all your topics, I think 99% of the time come with a blog that gives the step by step. So yeah. for everyone, go click on the blog link that I put in the description. Get on Teresa's calendar if you are finding that you are exposed to any of these security issues that that Teresa talked about because you want to make sure you know how to do it yourself or have somebody who can do it for you and not be the victim of what's going on with in cybersecurity and uh, you don't want your website crashing. That would completely stink and ruin your year yeah. or your month at least. Yeah, we're busy enough as entrepreneurs. Let's not add to that by taking risks that are unnecessary. Exactly. All right. Thanks, yeah. Teresa. So enjoy the rest of your time there in uh, North Carolina, you said, right? North Carolina. Yep. North Carolina. All right. Jealous as jealous can be. <laughs> it looks warmer there than it is here. I'm sitting, I do have a sweater on, but I have flip flops on. Ah, oh, flip flop weather. Okay. It's, it's right yeah. around the corner here in New right York. Around the corner. <laughs> so, all right, everyone go have a great Wednesday and Teresa, I will see you next month and enjoy your time in North Carolina. All right, sounds good.